Well, let's speak now to railway engineer and writer Gareth Dennis. Gareth, thank you very much for joining us. And I think it's um, worthwhile to start by getting you to explain exactly how a funicular like this operates. Yeah, funicular railways are, um, you know, we've got loads in the UK. People will be familiar with them. My, I live, my grandparents are in North Devon and the Linton Linmouth is a famous one. They work fundamentally on, it's a very steep bit of terrain. So a conventional traction, you know, steel on steel traction railway on its own doesn't work. You need something to haul it up the hill. And the clever thing about a funicular is that the weight of the train going down pulls the other train up. And so the, the way that this system was originally installed and lots of other funiculars is actually that you fill the top one with water and release the brakes and it pulls the one up uh, up, up the hill. They are cabled connected to each other. So there is a single cable connected these two. Uh, so they're kind of completely interlinked. And in theory, that makes it an extremely safe way to operate that system. The the funicular in Lisbon actually was, uh, you know, about 100 years ago, converted into an electric traction. So actually, it, fairly uniquely, it had a what's called a pantograph connecting up to electric wires and powering itself going up and down the hill. But again, still, you have a system that is connected by a wire and the two cars are connected to each other going up and down the hill, passing each other. So an inherently safe design, so long as it's well maintained and so long as you know, something unforeseen like this, you know, obviously there's a lot of detail still to emerge mm. as to what's happened here. Lots of discussions about cables um, and, and brakes. Uh, there's a lot to be understood about what's happened here, but explaining, understanding the fundamentals of how funicular works is really hopefully useful for, for, um, for your viewers to understand kind of the fundamentals of the system and, and how something might have gone wrong, but fundamentally how it is, you know, that theoretically quite safe design. And that investigation, is beginning straight away. In terms of the potential range of causes, what could have gone wrong here? Yeah, so you know, it, whether it's a cable breaking, there's also the option where cables, they, they run in, in, in what are called runners within a groove un, under the vehicle. If they've been, if something's happened that's pulled a cable up out, so it doesn't necessarily need to break, but it can be pulled out of the system so that you lose that tension that allows the two vehicles to basically stop them you know the the, the inherent nature of the, the, the system when it's working properly is that they can't run away because one will always break the other one if you like but if there's some slack in the cable generated because of a cable being pulled out of the if it's runners that potentially could result in a, a an uncontrolled acceleration a cable snapping absolutely um could result in that um in in that failure as well so the cable is certainly where a lot of that interest is going to be and understanding, you know, what has there been some issue, something lodged in the cable that, that just that pulled it out of the runners, a maintenance issue. You know, this is a very old system um, maintained. You know, it's, it is a national historic monument, in fact, because of its of its age. And uh, as you said, Anita, earlier, you know, Lisbon, for anyone who doesn't know, Lisbon is a beautifully 3D city, very much, very hilly, up and down funiculars and, and the, the trams weaving up and down the kind of the, the, the beautiful streets is, is just a natural part of, of, of life for people who live in Lisbon. Um, and so it's, it's a natural, you know, there are lifts that run between streets, all of these different ways to deal with the 3D city. So people are going to be pretty shocked that this has happened and, and, and I'm sure extremely keen to understand what the, what the cause is. Absolutely. And, and you, you talk there, Gareth, about uncontrolled acceleration. Presumably, given the size and weight of a funicular cab, combine that with an uncontrolled acceleration and you get the sort of the sort of damage that we're seeing here, you know, a really mangled wreck which has crashed into the wall of a building. Yeah, the images are absolutely appalling, and, I, and I, you know, I, I just the, the loss of life is, is 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 appalling, but also the shock to to everyone else in the city. This is you know it's something that's such a fundamental part of their life, uh, and, and seeing it you know damaged and 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 the, the harm caused to the people and the uh, and the impact this has on something that's assumed to be completely safe. This will shape people's confidence in the system. You know the the. That's why it's so important that the investigation understands exactly what the issue is and understands what caused it without aiming to blame anyone, but just understands, just as we have in the UK, we have the Railway Accident Investigation Branch. They don't seek to, to allocate blame. What they do is understand the problems so that they can be fixed so that the, the problem doesn't happen again. Now, uh, you were explaining how this system works. From the images that we've seen, the other cab of the funicular seems to still be at the bottom of the hill or very close to the bottom of the hill. Um, does that suggest to you that whatever happened to the other part of the funicular, the other cab, happened so quickly 
um, that there wasn't time or that the system wasn't working to, to get the other cab even moving up the hill? I mean, I'm wading into the realms of speculation at this point, but if you have another, if the other vehicle is safe and at the bottom of the hill, that suggests to me that the other vehicle was on its way up before the, you know, before whatever has happened has resulted in it running freely down the hill. It's, it's worth saying that vehicles on, you know, wheels on, you know, rail vehicles on tracks can get to pretty high speed before they fall off, you know, above their normal design speed before they actually derail which suggests that this, you know, and, and also looking at the images of the damage, suggests that this reached quite a significant speed before it was brought to a, a, an abrupt halt, um, which would seem to, match, again, I'm wading into speculation, it would seem to suggest that it is a vehicle that has accelerated from further up the hill downwards, um, and the derailment has happened close to the bottom of the uh, hill, so it's travelled quite a distance um, looking at the kind of the layout and, and what has happened. So, again, just to reiterate, the investigation will come up with all the details I'm speculating, but based on the, the information before me, that is, and for one vehicle to be safe and static at the bottom, the other would therefore, by the inherent nature of a funicular system, have been most you know, part way or most of the way up the slope. So, yeah, understanding exactly the, the layout will be one of the first things that the investigators, well, in fact, they will be doing it right now. The investigators will be out there understanding, you know, where did the problem occur? Where was the point at which this vehicle left the tracks? because that will then help them to understand what the speed was, which helps them to understand how much further up the hill that the problem might have occurred. These investigators will be very experienced in picking up these telltales that allow them to understand, basically recreate, if you like, what happened, the sequence of events. These things happen very quickly, but they leave lots of telltales, you know, scratches on the rails, damage to pavement, you know, paving slabs, the, you know, whether the cable is, you know, for example, if the cable has snapped, not necessarily that that's happened, but if it has, Things like, has it snapped cleanly? Does the metal look clean? Or are there obvious signs of rust, which would suggest maintenance issues? All these things are what the investigators will be looking at in very close detail, applying their experience to make sure we get to the bottom of what's happened. OK, Gareth, thank you very much for talking to us. Gareth Dennis, railway engineer and writer.